and welcome everyone to this lesson, which is all about relative pronouns. Let me share my screen and start the lesson. It's based on a question that I often get about relative pronouns, which is, can we replace any relative pronoun, that's who, which, whom, and whose, with the word that? The answer is, in many cases, yes, but there are some cases where we can't. Let's start with a quick review of relative pronouns before we look at the use of the word that. What is a relative pronoun? A relative pronoun is a word which connects a noun to a clause which gives information about that noun. And there are two main categories of relative pronouns. The first one is relative pronouns that refer to people, and there are three of those, who, whom, and whose. For example, I love people who speak their mind. I prefer friends with whom I can be honest. Now, often in English, we put the preposition with to the end of the sentence, and in that case, you can still use whom, but very often we change it to who. So you can say, I prefer friends who I can be honest with. And the example with whose is, I like listening to individuals whose opinions differ from mine. The opinions belong to individuals, and in this case, our relative pronoun is whose. So, the second category is relative pronouns that refer to things, and there are two of those, which, and again, whose. For example, I love things which can be recycled, and clothes whose labels are intact can be resold. A quick note that you can use of which instead of whose for objects, like labels belonging to clothes, but that creates a more complicated structure and sounds quite formal too. For example, saying clothes, the labels of which are intact, can be resold, or even more formal and more complicated, clothes of which the labels are intact can be resold. These are usually avoided, and whose is always a better choice. So use whose both for people and for objects. So which one of these can be replaced with that? Which, who, and whom can be replaced? For example, I love things that can be recycled. I love people that speak their mind. I prefer friends that I can be honest with, preposition at the end. So that makes that a very useful word, especially when it's difficult to decide if a word refers to people or things, for example, company, team, or group. So which ones we cannot replace with that? That would be whose and whom after a preposition. For example, we can't say clothes that labels are intact. It has to be clothes whose labels are intact. I like listening to individuals whose opinions differ from mine. We cannot use that here. And if we keep the preposition in the middle of the sentence, again, that doesn't work. I prefer friends with whom I can be honest. So that answers the question, but there is one more important point I need to mention to you, and that's the difference between a defining and a non-defining relative clause. A relative clause is the part that provides the information about the noun, it's the phrase. This phrase, this part, can be defining or essential, or non-defining or non-essential. With a defining a relative clause, if you remove the information, we don't know what or who you're talking about anymore. So it has to stay in the sentence. With a non-defining or non-essential clause, if you remove the information, we still know who or what you're talking about. This clause only gives additional non-essential information. Let's look at some examples. So we had uh, previously the example of a defining clause, I love things which can be recycled. The example of a non-defining clause would be this top, 
which I've only worn once, can be recycled. You can draw which I've only worn once, and you still have a complete sentence, and we know which top. This top can be recycled. Another example, we had the defining clause, I love people who speak their mind. Let's change it to a non-defining clause. For example, we can say, John, who always speaks his mind, called Jenny a liar. So now we can draw who always speaks his mind. It's just additional information and say, John called Jenny a liar. We still know who we're talking about. So why am I mentioning this? Because it makes a difference to whether we can use that or not. We cannot use that for a non-defining clause. For example, we have the defining one, I love things which or that can be recycled, no problem. But with the other example, this top, which I've only worn once, we cannot use that. Another example, we had the defining clause, I love people who or that speak their mind. But in the sentence with John, we cannot use that, only who works here. John, who always speaks his mind, called Jenny a liar. And note that in written English, the non-defining clause always comes after a comma. Right? That separates it. It tells us that it's additional, non-essential information. Now, one last thing to mention, uh, it's a mistake that I often hear, is please do not use what instead of which or that. Right? So, for example, put the clothes, uh, sorry, put the clothes, which or that can be recycled in that bag. Don't say put the clothes, what can be recycled in that bag. Because what has a larger meaning, it includes the noun as well. What means the thing which or the thing that. So instead of put the clothes which can be recycled in that bag, instead of the whole part, the clothes which or the clothes that, you can say put what can be recycled in that bag. Okay, that's the end of the lesson. I hope it has been helpful in answering the question when we can use the word that instead of relative pronouns. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. For more on this topic, click here. Remember to also check out my complete online course and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and happy studies.